Duncan was watching one of my videos, just like many of you are, and he hit me up, said, hey, Alex, I got my song mastered at Abbey Road Studios, all the stereo, but I want to also create an Atmos version so that when I launch it, I have both stereo and Atmos. I said, Duncan, that's a great idea. And so by having this, as this album assembler, it's an easy way not only to compare my Atmos mixes with the stereo masters, but also to apply additional tonal changes and dynamic control. Hey guys, what's up? This is Alex with Alex Pro Mix, your favorite channel here on YouTube to learn Dolby Atmos and stereo mixing and mastering. That's right. My name is Alex and I'm your host. In this video, we are gonna take a deep dive into new software from Dolby Labs. This is called the Dolby Atmos Album Assembler. What is it? Well, let's have a look. The Dolby Atmos Assembler allows you to take your Dolby Atmos mixes, which are huge, large gigabyte files, import them into a session and compile your album. Now, prior to this software, there was no real easy solution to take multiple Atmos mixes, put them in a timeline and compare them against each other. Sure, you can bring ADM files into Pro Tools, Logic or Nuendo, but honestly, it was a mess. So what Dolby have provided is a solution for Atmos mixers and engineers and mastering engineers to be able to take multiple Atmos mixes and assemble them into one piece of software. So let's have a look. For this demonstration, I've loaded up some songs already that are part of one album. This album is called Solo, Songs of Limitless Optimism, Solo by Duncan Daniels. And it was ranked as one of the top African spatial audio albums on Apple Music. If you want to check it out, check my boy out, check it out on a title, Amazon and Apple Music and hear it in spatial audio. All right, so let's have a look. So the Dolby Atmos assembler has to be linked to the Dolby Atmos renderer, which is this right here. If you're on Logic or Nuendo and you're using the native Atmos renderer, it won't sync to that. You have to use the Dolby Atmos renderer software, which is a standalone software. So basically what's taking place is that this sends all the information to the renderer and then the renderer plays back on headphones and on speakers. And if you guys already know, I have a 714 room, Atmos room here in the studio. All right, so let's take a look at the preferences. So here under preferences, there's not much going on. You have preferences, LTC output for time code, and that's set to 129. And that's already pre-configured here. If I go to preferences, that's already by default set to 129. All right, so no changes there. Zoom in and zoom out is command plus and minus. So I can zoom and zoom out. Okay, some other keyboard shortcuts is toggling between the stereo reference and the Atmos mix. So I can do that by holding down shift and S and you can see this toggling back and forth. We'll play that in a minute. Additionally, you can adjust the stereo gain of the stereo master. One of the things that I have to educate uh, labels and artists about Dolby Atmos is that the loudness level is much lower than stereo. However, when the song is published and you have loudness normalization on, like on your music player, and Apple is called Soundcheck, when you have that enabled, the Dolby Atmos actually sounds louder than the stereo version, even though the stereo version is louder. So just a little piece of advice there. Cool. Enough talking, let's check out some of the tracks from this album. And what I'll do is I'll toggle the stereo reference. We'll hear the Abbey Road Master against my Dolby mix. Here we go. Okay, let's jump into this track now. Now so the galley carry me into the corner. So as you can tell, like when we jump between stereo and Atmos, a couple of things change. Stereo has its own tonality because it's been processed by a mastering chain. All right. And Atmos the mix had to be rebuilt 
but we took a different approach. And part of that different approach is basically creating a spatial audio version of the mix. So whenever you take tracks and you take them outside of the stereo channels, left and right channels, and you lose the compression and EQ that was applied to that channel, you're gonna get different tonal changes. And that's just part of the nature of spatial audio or Dolby Atmos mixing. And so to compensate for that, this software gives you some tools to be able to shape the tone of it. So for example, when I click on any one of these clips, I can enable EQ. So let's go ahead and enable EQ. And you know, this is not your Pultic emulation, right? This is not like your AMEC EQ emulation. This is just a standard, clean, digital sounding EQ. Again, it's meant for utility purpose, not to like reshape the mix. But what I do appreciate about the guys from Dolby is the controls. As I'm turning up the gain up and down, it's basically changing it by increments of a 10th of a dB, which is really important when doing mastering applications because you're not necessarily like remixing the song. You're just kind of finessing and massaging it just a little bit. So anyways, you have all these bands, you have shelf, you have bells and you have filters. So at any point I can EQ my Atmos mix to better match the stereo reference, or I can ignore it completely and EQ the Atmos mixes to each other, which is really what I did. Additionally, you have controls here for limiter. So I can enable the limiter. Again, very, very basic threshold output gain attack and release. Now I've been told this is not a hard break limiter. So it's more functions more like a, like a softening limiter, if you will, or a compressor, depending on how you drive it. On the options, there's not a lot of stuff there other than copying the limiter settings and moving it to the next one. Another thing that you'll notice down here on the bottom panel is that when you click on a track, and I've already went ahead and analyzed it, it'll give you the loudness information. It'll show you the Dolby Atmos, integrated loudness, and the binaural loudness. Now, I do warn you that when you click analyze, it takes a couple of minutes to analyze a whole song because why any one of these tracks could have up to 128 objects with metadata information about the binaural settings. So it does take a while. All right. Uh, additionally, you can adjust the volume almost like gain or clip gain per clip like that. And then the other thing that's super important, which I kind of ran into when I was first playing around with the software, is that the stereo file, the stereo master, has to match the length of the Dolby mix. And that's super important for streaming. In fact, it'll get kicked back if it's not. And it'll also get kicked back if your volume is too loud on Dolby, the Dolby master. So just a couple of key things. Let's go ahead and jump back and let's zoom through some of the other tracks. Now you'll notice some of these master tracks are not as loud as others. So there's no quick way to basically adjust the volume of these stereo clips. They give you the option to adjust the volume of the Atmos clips, but not the stereo clips. So sometimes you have to play around with the stereo gain and try to match it by ear. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the reference, stereo reference up against the Dolby Master. Okay, so just for the sake of this video, let's see if we can EQ the Atmos mix to sound a little bit more like the Stereo Master. So I'm gonna enable the EQ, and I hear that there's a little bit more like low mids being pushed up on the Atmos. And again, because it's not being compressed or limited or EQ'd or saturated as the stereo, but let's see if we can compensate for that, okay? Okay, so that's a little bit closer. And what I have to do is basically scoop out the mids, scoop out around 300, 700, and 2K. And it's not going to be like apples to apples comparison. But the fact that I even have an EQ that I can apply across this Atmos file is just amazing because to do this in a DAW, 
gets a lot of trouble. All right, so that's the EQ. Let's see what we can do with the limiter and if it can give us the same groove as what the stereo master is giving us. So typically with the limiter on the master bus, you know, 30 milliseconds or less release. Let's start with 300. And again, this is not a brick wall limiter. So let's see what it does. Here we go. All right, cool. So we got that. We got the renderer working. We got EQ and we got compression. And if I wanted to apply that same EQ and compression to like the next clip, to give you the ability to go into edit, go to options, click copy EQ settings, enable it. And here we are going to hit paste. So I'm able to take kind of like that same EQ footprint from one track and apply it to another or from one song and apply it to another. I can do the same thing with the limiter. Uh, so let's go to this track, go to options, copy limiter settings, go to the next track and hit paste. And that kind of gives you a starting point. That way your songs kind of have a cohesive sound from beginning to end. So let's see if that works. You are, you're beautiful the way you are. I'm a good no change who you are. So again, just to recap, the Dolby Atmos album assembler is really the only tool in the market at the moment where you can import multiple Atmos mixes and be able to create a cohesive EQ curve and dynamics, check for loudness, and as the name implies, assembler allows you to assemble your album from beginning to end. This truly comes at the right time because Dolby released the Dolby Atmos Production Suite and Mastering Suite about 12 months ago before this software, and the industry has adopted immersive audio in so many ways. Apple Music, Spatial Audio, uh, you have Deezer supporting Sony's 360 RA. You have Tidal supporting both Sony 360 and Dolby Atmos. You have Amazon supporting Dolby Atmos. And there's a couple of new streaming players that are supporting a different version of Spatial Audio called THX Spatial Audio, which we'll leave for another video and conversation. So again, I hope you guys learned something good and new. If you have any questions about this immersive audio mixing world, please feel free to leave your comments below. Also, be sure to check out alexpromix.com forward slash learn for articles, videos on Dolby Atmos mixing and mastering. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Alex here. I'm your host. If you're an artist, a music producer, or an engineer, this channel was created for you. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you again real soon. Peace.